If anything Rabbi Baruch asks from you, it is to accomplish da'as, to have presence of mind, because that is the whole purpose and intent, is to arrive at an era where the world will be the entire world will be involved with the singular task of knowing Hashem. Because the world is going to be filled with the knowledge of Hashem like the waters fill the ocean. And this is not for any other purpose except an end unto itself. That the physical world will be attaining a state of consciousness where you have das of Hashem and recognizing that in everything you encounter in your life, everything in your life is to know Hashem in that. And in fact, we learn that that is the ultimate reward is the, the tainug of the Baira. So when you have das as Hashem, when you know Hashem, when you feel a connection that's real, because da'as means connect, connecting. Like you connect with your spouse, Adam and Chava, and the first man and woman. It says he knew Eve, his wife, and that is representing the connection of polarities, male and female, first, and parents to all of us that, that come from that. Um, or if you believe you descend from apes. Um, I don't know how you, you understand that. Um, so we are supposed to get back to the garden in the sense of actually experiencing Hashem with us in paradise. And that's called Das of Hashem. And the ultimate reward is when that becomes a means to experience Tainu Baira, the pleasure of Hashem. In other words, Hashem creates a world where the souls have to journey and, and find their way out of the darkness. And that creates pleasure in Hashem. And we don't really know that. We don't experience that until the, the um, promise of the, the perfection of, of everything, which is the living world, the world that enlivens. So I wanted to go to the source of the Rebbe quotes this. He, he quotes chapter 12, but I'm starting at 10, because we're going to get a running start. I want you to see, remember we said it started with the idea of why will, when we had, when we had been redeemed from Egypt, it was in a frenzy. We ate with our sticks in our hands and our, and our underwear, but too tight. Because <laughs> um, they were like, Marching out of there, marching out of out of prison, and, and make and um, and facing enemies on the way. They actually brought swords with them. Rashi uh, interprets, and they had to fight off the bad guys in, in the desert. Um, but that kind of frenzy and that war-like. Um, they're, they're just faced with this immediate, urgent need to, to get out of there. They were, in the, they were in the 49th gate of impurity. Once you reach 50, there's no, no coming back. So Hashem transformed them top-down, miraculous um, imposition of divine reality, resulting in the ten plagues, the splitting of the sea, and this like almost panicked um, mitzvah of eating the Korban Pesach. But it says this, the, the Paschal, a sacrifice that is, um, the, the time of the future redemption, it's not going to be in a frenzy. We're going to walk out. Other places it says Hashem will take each person by the hand. Other places it says that Hashem will even resurrect the dead with, with their illnesses so that they could see how Hashem is the one that heals them from that. And now the world can see that this person, um, the healing happened to the same person that suffered. It's not like it, the question is um, whether 
the nations will say, well, how do we know that these are the people that that's had that national history and the suffering that they went through, and that's who's being rewarded? Maybe it's an, another person. So you're not going to... The resurrection is not about some guy automatically zapping himself into... into um, it says that you're going to dim the sun by how bright or even the heel of your foot will shine. So that isn't intended to happen as something that is imposed, um, but something that's brought you, bring in, you bring it into yourself. The, we had an imposed redemption in the Exodus from Egypt. The redemption we're having now is the means to uh, set our own pace on how much we want to transform to, to a, a person that has overcome any difficulty in s- settling in, in his land because all the anti-Semites are blotted out or they have no control or they cease to exist. Um, so you're able to focus on experiencing Hashem and everything, the result of which you transform yourself at your pace, as you need in your areas of life that are particular to you. And ultimately, the physical, the most external part of you becomes the source for inspiring the entire spiritual universe. And the Dirma Taktainim is achieved, the dwelling place in the lower realm. The the ultimate infinity of being able to um, bridge opposites by being the source for everything, um, will be experienced as it is. Anyways, this is a mime of the Rebbe Ron Rash. It's called the Kacha. This is chapter 10. We're getting, remember, we're going to chapter 12 and on, and then it will um, get to the topic that we launched from, the idea of Tainu Beira, what it means that Hashem's pleasure, and we have to experience Hashem's pleasure. That's the ultimate perfection. And now we'll understand according to the way the commentaries interpret that it's better to have one moment of repentance and good deeds in this world than all of the life of the world to come. What does it mean the world to come? This is referring to the world of resurrection. The world of rejuvenation, I like to call it. Welcome. Menachem, you're an early riser. I love it. You're inspiring. I hope you have like a funny beanie on your head with a pom-pom, like what I would have when I just wake up. <laughs> the white Breslov thing. It's, it's the most comfortable way. They really understand nightwear. The Breslov community thing. I mean, I don't want to insult them. I mean, they offer a tremendous simcha and I guess that's part of it. When you have a, a little pom-pom on your head and you're dancing around, that would be very um, jubilant. <laughs> We're discussing, we just started learning from the Rebbe Marash. I gave a big introduction, check it out later. Um, we're gonna understand that the way the, the interpretation of the idea that it's better to have a moment of tshuva and good deeds in this world than all of the life of the world to come. So it seems like, what's the point of, I, I'm always thinking about reward. It's more precious and more beautiful what we accomplish here. So that's referring to the world of resurrection. But look at how you talking at first glance, it's a wonder. How could this, what is it saying? How could it be? How could it be that what we do in this world is, is more beautiful than anything else, even the reward that Hashem creates for us? Um, so the explanation is, according to what the sages say, He explains what this reward is and what the mechanics are, and it has to do with the number 310. And he goes through how you get that, and it's very, very cool. So I wanted to start with this part. Um, so Hashem is going to bequeath to every single tzaddik v'tzaddik 
310 worlds. It's called Shai Eilmais. 310 worlds of delight. Shenemar lahan chil ayavayesh, as it says to bequeath to my beloved the yesh, which is gematria 310. It has a lot to do with transforming your yeshes, your self concept. Vekseev v'amechulam sadikim, and it says your nation is entirely filled with righteous people. What do I do with all these worlds? We're going to learn exactly that. We'll see exactly, we're going to go through the Kabbalah, but I thought I'm going to go a bit faster. The Kabbalah, because I like to get to the parts of it that has to do with what you are meant to feel, much more than what direction it's coming from. So I'm going to go a bit fast. So it comes out that every single Jew will inherit by Hashem 310 worlds. I mean, of course you're king. Every person has to express the Nitzutz of Mashiach. Mashiach is the ultimate king, and every Jew has to assume the throne in their world. That's the spark of Mashiach in them. And that's all that Mashiach wants to teach us, that we have everything we need inside us, look deeply inside and listen to Terah, and live with Hashem. <laughs> yes, 100%. In fact, we're going to learn that everyone will call the righteous. Here we're saying it means every Jew. They're going to call them Yud Kevavke, God's name, Avaya. That's the name of a Jew or the righteous. Um, so it comes out that every single Jew will inherit 310 worlds. The, the, the Yesh is transformed into, the self concept is transformed into an instrument to bestow reward. So, what is this idea of 310 worlds? It says in Mishle, acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. That is the gematria of Yesh, of Shai 310. The, world, the word Kana is 155, and it's mentioned twice. It's mentioned in reference. So you acquire wisdom and you acquire understanding. Each instance of Kana equals 155 plus 155 is 310. Um, now this corresponds to the lower aspect of God's crown. Um, and this is the nothingness in comparison to creation that creates the creation of wisdom. It, all of creation begins with wisdom. Welcome. It says that wisdom stems from ayin, from a state of nothingness, meaning nothing that came after the, the thought pertained to or was dependent upon that, that thought. In other words, creation is a, in one thought. Hashem is completely beyond. He's creating the, the yesh, the... Um, the self, the consciousness of wisdom. The reason why we call Hashem nothing in this sense, that, or that yesh, the creation, the self concept came from nothing, means it means that now it's impossible to fathom that. It comes from like the ant being plucked out of the petri dish. It, you, you cannot relate to the forces around you. But the truth is, the Rebbe Maharaj writes here, that this is the true yeshes, the true reality that exists in God's divine state of keser. Um, rather, to bestow upon my beloved Yesh, 310, or the idea of the true Yesh, the true un, um, con, as, uh, divine consciousness of Kesser. This is the latter part, 
the lower part of Kesser that's also called Yesh, which means something. So Ayin is really Yesh in its core. It's the Ani, the I is an Ayin, it's the same letters that spell I is, is Ayin. I, I mean Ani, I, is Ayin. So you have that flipping between Yesh and, the, and there's, there's the true yesh, the true divine understanding of what reality is, and then there is the created consciousness and perception of that reality. So that's a, it has that um, sort of pretzel inside it. The yesh leparash eid inyan bechin eshay elu, elu, and we could further explain the idea of these 310 worlds that every Jew is going to inherit. God's going to give you 310 worlds if you didn't think um, a, a few islands in the Caribbean would have been enough. It's, and I don't think it means 310 different AIs of, of the meta, of Zuckerberg's imagination. We're, this is a better way to understand the um, utopia that is intended. Okay, we're going through the Kabbalah now. It breaks into, we're going to go still, I think, a bit quicker, even though we're going fa- very fast. Valzehu so we're going to further explain. Now we'll understand this in light of what it says in the Torah that he called him, so Hashem calls Yaakov, Kel Elokei Yisrael, or different ways to interpret it. Um, but here the Rabbi Marash is interpreting this, these words to mean, Shamru Mazal, because the sages say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Karel Yaakov Kel, that Hashem called Yaakov Kel, which is a name of God, we even mispronounce it, so as not to take Hashem's name in vain, just uh, in, in conversation. So Kel, we could say that word in prayer, Aleph Lamed. Hashem called Yaakov Kel, which means mighty God. The Indian parish Kel Hu Bechinas Lamed Aleph Keitse Deshar, Deshare the Shari, that the idea of 31, I've always wondered, where do we get the number 31 kings in the, the Holy Land that the Jewish people had to uh, confront and defeat? But here you see a positive number of 32 corresponding to the, the diagonals that you get um, in the Kisve Ha'arizal, 31 different thorns you draw out, draw out all the, geogra- the geometry of the, the, the numbers, and it's like we used to have when we were a kid that you put the pen in the thing and you twiddle it around, and it made a beautiful um, thing you could do in a computer in two seconds. Another meaning of what, why, do we, why does Hashem refer to this Tiyaka by the word, word Kel, which is really a divine name? Um, it's the 31 gates, say the thorns on the gates, as the Arizal explains. But also, I think we'd have to look that up to understand that. Because the Aleph Lamed of God's name is Kale is 31. But he's going to use that in building the, the, the 310 as um, a construct of numbers which mean of ideas. So you're going to see how um, we, it has to do with the heart. Lamed Aleph is one short of the heart, and he explains how you achieve that. Um, the sages say with regard to the commandment, give a tithe in order that you should become wealthy. Aser ta'aser, you shall make more tithes in the future and become a, a source for more uh, generosity. You should um, give tithes in order that you should become wealthy, as we learn Gemara, Gemara Tainus in the Talmud. Even though it says you're not supposed to challenge God, this seems like you're testing Hashem. 
Nevertheless, this is an actually, this is an exception to the rule when it comes to charity. You are allowed to test God. As it says in Malachi, it says, test me, please. And test me, bring tithes to the house of Hashem. So here's an instruction in, in the Torah and Tanakh, Malachi, that you can test Hashem and in, in, when it comes to donating to a holy cause. And we know that Yaakov, who is, promi- is the source where we promise these 310 worlds. Oh no, here we're explaining why he's called Kael. Why he's called the mighty ruler, or a divine name of, of God, 31. So Yaakov fulfilled the mitzvah of tithing, as he says explicitly in the Torah, Parshas saying in the Torah. And now this is how you comprise these numbers. Since his children were really 12 plus 2 in Menashe of Ephraim, he had 12 tribes, and he had two of Yosef's children were, he, um, he were, was destined to have nations coming from them. A tribe is called a nation unto it in its own right. Tzemahem dalid b'chayres l'dalidi mahis. So take out from these the four firstborns for the four mothers, because it says, sanctify to me all the firstborns. Nishara Asara. So you have 14, you take away four, they're the firstborns that already belongs to Hashem, there's nothing for you to give. Then you have 10. And thus Hashem sanctified the tribe of Levi to stand to serve. And for that reason, Hashem called Yaakov Kel. 31, why 31? Because the meaning of Kel is it's known of what it says in the Sefer Yitzira one of the original Kabbalah texts, with 32 pathways of miraculous wisdom Hashem engraved, and he created his world. 32, so wisdom is comprised of 32 pathways, which is the gematria of heart, incidentally. Ubaseich elu halev. We're trying to figure out the relationship. Why 31? And now it seems like it's missing one to get the 32 pathways of wisdom. Ubaseich elu alamad beis nesiv asyash. Nesiv echad. But amongst these, there is one. Amongst the 32 um, paths, pathways of wisdom, there is one. Asher al of of which is written. Nesiv lo yadu ayet v'loishi zaf say ayin aye. Don't ask me. It's about a vulture or something. V'nim sa kinish ar lamed alaf nesivas. It comes out that you're left with thirty one. There's one special pathway that has to do with the ayet. Usually, I think it's like an, a vulture will not uh, cast its eye anymore. I don't know. You could look it up. It's in Eov job. 28.7, someone type out the translation. Therefore, you only have 31 paths left. We're going to single one out. It's special. That you have 31 paths. And when you consider that all these 31 paths are all included with 10 different variations on that, because everything's divisible by 10 in the Dewey Decimal System in Canada when I grew up. It's a very convenient number that Hashem, connect, if, he connect, if he created with like 46 or 52 or an odd number, I can't seem to get roll one, but it, it wouldn't have that perfection. So, 
everything is seen in a lens with like like the um, the bee has like a hundred video hoots going off or in a, in a grid on his eyeballs. Um, everything is 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 thus the thirty one becomes the three hundred and ten worlds that each person is promised. So there's thirty one paths of wisdom. There's a special one that no one casts an eye upon. It's impossible to look at that, look upon it. Laya do I it. I know maybe it's not a vulture. There, no one knows this, and no eye is set upon it. The, so we're going to exclude the thirty-two. There's thirty-one pathways that you can um, acquire in wisdom. The kasha bechin is lamin alden of sivas elu kolacha kolum eser zehu shai. That's how you get the third three hundred and ten worlds. So it's related to God's name, Kel. We said that that is inherited by Yaakov. We connected it with charity and testing God. I just like to keep bringing people in as they stroll through this class. I don't seem to mind when you guys stroll through this class because I don't give a time when I start. So it's, it's, not, it's my fault. There's something for me to repent for in the 10 days of repentance. If, if Hashem would, would make, be so kind as to make some kind of normalcy in this world, we'd have schedules that worked. The Yakis would be right. And this is why our sages say that Hashem gave the fathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, a taste of what everyone will experience. They had it already while they were alive. They didn't have to wait for the resurrection. That's why the Rebbe, I think, also says that a person doesn't have to be to die to be resurrected. You can rejuvenate yourself with good thinking and you don't have to die. That good thinking, the Rebbe calls humility. The Hainu Yaakov. So this applies to Yaakov. He lived in the world to come. Mashikaru Akadosh Baruch Hu Kel. That's why God calls him by the divine name Kel to represent this idea that he had the 310 worlds experienced while he lived. So that's what I want you to understand from this. The Tainug Baira is about living literally like the Abbas and li- actually beyond that, as we will see. Even the Abbas come back. To the, to the physical world so that they can experience the ultimate. You are going to achieve something that even Yaakov did not experience, but he did for a certain amount of time. Yaakov lived how long? 137 years, I believe. Um, I think that's wrong. Uh, Anyways, behind of Yaakov, Mashikaru HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kale. So Hashem called Jacob, he called him Kale. Shezeu Me'en Hashai Eilamais, to represent this idea that everyone is going to ultimately inherit 310 worlds. He had that for a duration of time, it was rather long um, compared to today's standards. The 310 worlds he already lived with, that are the, the destiny of inheriting of every single Jew. Everyone is going to achieve that kind of experience in this world, like Yaakov had. Jacob. It comes out that the compensation for the tithing, the giving of charity that Yaakov did, or the dedication to divine purposes. Zachalit Aim Main Ayam Haba. He merited to experience something that was a preview of the world to come. Shalabhinas Asiris. Hainu Lamid Alaf Pamun Asir Hanal. So that's why he had the wealth, the Asiris of multiplying by 10. He gave Meiser. Welcome. You understand? You understand the math here? It works really nicely. You give Meiser, you give 10% to, to donate it to Hashem or people that need it in your neighborhood. 
and you become rich. You get multiplied by 10. I guess if you have everything, all the spheres, it makes sense that you're rich. And for that reason, it's better, it's more beautiful, one moment of tshuva and ma'isim ta'ivim, repentance and good deeds, that you do in this world, from all the life of the world to come. I think yeah, the word here is yafa, it's more beautiful. But I think it has to do with, um, I think I was mentioning the other day, that the thing that causes something shows a power of it. So if you have the ability to be rewarded with 310 worlds, it, it means that the opportunity or your power to do that shows some type of thing that the employer didn't have, as it were. You're hired for a job and you do it, whatever you're compensated for it, the fact that you can elicit that means that you're needed for something. If, you, if a person's not needed for something, even if they're rich, they end up as a couch potato of some sort. Did you ever have that um, Mr. Potato Head when you were a kid? You put like the, the different hairdos on it and stuff. And you, and you like grind it and the, the Play-Doh comes out. We used to have visceral experiences when we were kids. Now it's all about a screen of glass. And a bunch of tiny dots going into our head. As opposed to like the, the Mr. Potato Head, you could actually touch the world. We've lost the ability to even experience the world. We have to have a meta to, to make a surrogate reality for ourselves. Anyways, the, the opportunity to be present in the world and do good things is more beautiful than all of the life of the world to come. That there were 613 mitzvahs given to Moshe, Moses on Mount Sinai, Shem Beis Pamim Yash. The way you get this is double Yash, the Shai Eilomis, the 310, now you have 600 in 20. And it seems to include there without mentioning it, the um, seven mitzvahs midrabana. Because 613 is not 310 doubled. You have to add another seven. Oh, here he mentions it actually right now. That when we talk about Welcome. The Shai Eilma is the number 310, which we just explained at great length, and identified that with the, the bottom part of Kesser. God is a crown. It has a lower aspect. Avaltariyag mitzvahs derais of Zayin derbanan zeyot trach v'chinas shleimas a Kesser. So you want to achieve the 613, you add seven of the Rabbanan, the, the interpretive or de- derived rabbinic mitzvahs, think even created in, but they always find a source in the Torah. Each equals 620. The Kesser spells out Trach, Trach the 600, 620 pillars of light. That is the perfection of Kesser. So on its own, so okay, I think the more interesting is why do you double the 600, the 310 to begin with? I don't know if the hint is that you have two things. You have tshuva, repentance, and good deeds. I guess if you don't do good deeds, then you repent, and then you double the, the shy. You went twice, you went, you had to do tshuva too. We'll see if he explained it. I think he, I remember him explaining it here this morning. So there's an advantage of what you can do compared to what you will get. Because what you will get is only 310. Or double it and get... 620 actually is higher than 613. But if you want to get the full 620, the Kesser, the perfection of Kesser, you have to do something. It's not enough just to get the reward. The 310. You do your part... And Hashem does his part, you get 310, you double it, 
in that way, you get 620. The, the crown is full. And the reward, Hashem was not going to be stingy and not compensate. So therefore, you get a commissary, um, 300, you put in 310. Hashem puts in 310. The, sh, the yesh is translated, the yesh, the sense of self, is translated to the ayin, the source for the yesh, the yesh, hamiti of keser. When keser is complete, you have the true I, the true, the ayin becomes more familiar and you say anim, I. The, the, the nothingness becomes the yesh, the 310. The, the shlemus of the caster, when both do, do their part, you want to get the 620, each person puts in the 310 of their own, like Yaakov did, and he got 10 times payment. He got the 310. The schar So Hashem has to give us the reward. It's whether we like it or not. Welcome. al the, br- the, gr- the groom sounds more like a, a broom every time I say groom. Chassan sounds so much better. And when he misses from the joy of the groom on the bride, Yasis Alaika Lukayak, just like that, it should say Kim says Chassan al Kalai. I read it wrong because it was missing the Chaf. Kim says, like the, the joy of the groom with the bride. Or upon the bride, Hashem will rejoice upon you. It's a verse in Yeshaya, Isaiah 62, 5. Yasishem beis panim yesh. So here you have the word yesh, yesh, yasis. Kim says chasen, it's a sasen, has this doubled sound. It has this yasis, is two yeshes come together. And you get the 620. Yasis. Hem base panim yesh. Isn't the Siddhas of the Red Mount Rush inspiringly beautiful? Look at these numbers bouncing around so beautifully. Um, it, I mean, the ideas. Yasis hem base panim yesh. He will rejoice. Yasis is twice 310. Because in, in the future, redemption. The destiny is that the entire compensation for all your efforts, who lahaisif iris betzilas, the accomplishment of what you've done is that you added light in the highest world, the divine world of betzilas. Behindu ki kanabina. It's because you you acquired 155 of wisdom, and you kana you acquired 155 of bina, the 310. So again, we connected. We connected it with charity, but that's really how you add. Um, okay, we have two two ways to approach the, the three hundred and ten here. We have the acquiring understanding and wisdom, and we have um, the thirty one paths of wisdom. It's sort of the same thing here. It's just a, it's adding bina. Rock pay alafi. Ham Aleph Yesh, so that equals the, the Kana and Kana, the acquiring these two things, wisdom and understanding. So you, you have twice 310. No, sorry, once 310, 155 plus 155. But by being involved in serving Hashem through the 613 mitzvah of the Torah, with the seven of the rabbinical mitzvahs, ye base panim yesh. Then it will be twice yesh. It seems like it, it, it says that there's, if you want to do the 310 as a separate project, that's acquiring wisdom and understanding. But if you want to achieve the 620, the, the crown, the perfection, you, it's, what does it add? It says, the Aveda Batariag Mitzvah Deraisa. The Aveda. There's wisdom and there's Aveda. There's application and there's the, the, what it's intended to do. I 
think that's the distinction there. Yasis Hulu. And then you have the 620 is Yasis, the joy, the Kim says Chosen al Kala, Ken Yasis Alayach Alukayach. So Hashem will rejoice upon you. So he has to give a reward. That is his reward in a sense, or entirely, to give that, to show um, he cared. Welcome, Sean Bag. Hi, good to see you. You're awesome. There's this intention of giving the reward, and therefore Hashem promises to 620 Yasis to um, rejoice with you or upon you. And that is this experience of, of celebration that will be in the future redemption. That's why the sages say that Hashem does not rejoice in His world. It says it wasn't something God created world and was and rejoiced in those worlds, but it says that He will rejoice in His ma'asav in His deeds in His creation. Meaning that in the future Hashem will rejoice in the, what they did with Shai, with 310, these 310 worlds. So the Jewish people did effort, and whatever joy they had, it's not going to be complete until they experience what they accomplished in the highest realm, we don't necessarily experience what's going on in the lights of Atzillus here. Um, so, but, but that is a promise and a necessary component for you to actually experience that. Lachen, we're just gonna finish, this is gonna be the chapter 10, we're starting with jumping into the 10th. Um, and it's, it's, one more little paragraph here, or it's all one big paragraph on the screen, but um, just a little bit more, and then we're going to have to um, continue this, hopefully, Erev Shabbos, so stay tuned for that. Hey, Sean. We got to, uh, you got to see this new place I just moved. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, it, it looks like, like Scarface's uh, plateau. I mean, I hope to do something different. Maybe they'll give me a microphone or something or a guitar. I don't need, I don't need his, uh, his little friend is not my little friend. My little friend is a bit more twangy. Um, <laughs> so Hashem rejoicing upon the Jewish people, that is his main joy. Shehu Iker Giluya Simko, that's the main experience of joy. So what the reason why we say what you do in this world is beautiful, is more beautiful than everything that you can get, is because they are the ones that elicit these six hundred and twenty pillars of light. Hashem promises that you'll get beam me up for everything that you do. Beam me up right to the, the capital of the pillar is the crown of the pillar. So they're called, Kesser is also crown. Here we're, we're identifying with the uh, 620 pillars, but they all have, are expressive of the crown that, um, you know how fancy it gets. That that is more precious. What you can do is more precious than all the life of the world to come, which is 310 worlds that everyone is going to bequeath to the, in the future promise of redemption. That this is the idea of what Ayelam Haba is all about. It's about experiencing God's appreciation for all that you did. By giving the crown by the 620 pillars. And from but what we do now, Yiskala Simkali Yisyasis Kegibor. That is the means to elicit the, the joy that Hashem is going to ex, ex, 
load on us because it says okay, Gibor, like a, a mighty person. Like Shimshun was probably pretty good at a party. The, the rejoicing like a Gibor. So the effect of what we achieve is what we do now. It will be experience. You'll see what you, the tiny bayre we're going to see. The pleasure that you cause Hashem is what you were intended to hear or experience what that was for everything you did. So all the suffering are thus um, um, consoled through this expression of, it's really the ultimate therapy session. Thus, it is more beautiful, one moment of doing this stuff in this world, than all that you could possibly get, because it's the means to bring it up. And it's also about what, what's required of us. Required, God created a creation, and we're supposed to show love for our creator. And when you do that, so now you see the delight that that caused. That's why we say that the reward of a mitzvah is actually the mitzvah itself. That the reward for the mitzvah that you do in this world which is she skalu etzma mitzvahs when it's ultimately experienced for what it is. Kamei shehen v'lei rak ziv terasim v'lasim kamei b'gan eden. And not just like some spectacular um, experience of the Shekhinah in paradise in the, in the heavenly worlds. Not, that's just called a ziv, a, a shine or like it's almost like being a, the difference between a spectator and being on the field. And this is um, to experience it as like something that you get out of it is less precious and beautiful than the act of setting it all up. So the effort that you do is more beautiful because the doing is supposed to be the reward. Now, how does that make sense in light of what we're saying? We're saying we, we're promised a time in the world to come when, where the reward is experienced because Hashem wants to show us what pleasure He got in what we did. I guess the idea is to show really that it's about what we did since we had an opportunity to do something and we did it. That is what our souls were intended to do in their creation. I want to think about it a bit more, but remember, this is all sort of a, um, a running start to get to chapter 12. That was chapter 10. Tomorrow we'll do 11, God willing, or not tomorrow, tomorrow Shabbos. Tonight, Shabbos, so let's, um, for bring an hour before Shabbos, I expect all of you to be ready with shine shoes.